Hi, I'm Rick Zanotti, and this is episode 18 of Captivating, the Adobe Captivate podcast. You asked for it. You wanted it. You needed it. And Adobe finally gave it to you. Variables. Captivate 4 now supports variables, and in this episode, we're going to talk about how to create variables, how to modify them, and how to use them. So let's get started. All right, we are back here on the island, and we want to make our website a little more interactive, a little more personal. So we created a text caption that says, please tell us your name. Now we need a mechanism to input that name and then use it later on in our piece. So let's start by inserting and in this case, a standard object. And we want to insert a text entry box. Now, in our text entry box, we don't really care about the validations or default text because your name could be one of a billion names. So we'll leave that as is. But we do care about the number of attempts. We don't want infinite attempts. We want to give you one shot at knowing your own name. And after you enter your name, we want to be able to go to the next slide automatically. Now, that's when you'll hit the Submit button, but we also want you to be able to, using a, a regular process key, and Enter. So when you hit Enter, it'll automatically take you to the next uh, action. It'll submit your value. So we'll say OK. Let's also change our font, and we'll keep the default. We'll make it uh, 22, and we'll say it's bold, and OK. Now, we don't really care about these two, size and audio, but we do care about options. And we want this to be on the screen for rest of slide. We also want this to be 1.5 seconds uh, for the pause. And we don't want any transition on this particular field, so we'll say no transition. We'll keep transparency to zero, meaning it'll be fully visible. And we don't want to validate what we're entering. We do want to pause the project until something has been entered. And we'll leave everything else as is. Now the final tab is the Advanced tab. This is brand new to Captivate 4. This allows us to create variables. And in this case, it'll say Variable Associated. Variable Associated will associate this particular value that we're entering into a variable. And we're going to call this first name. We don't want any actions here, but we could. Let's say we have a different kind of variable. We can enable an object. We can disable objects after we input a variable. We can assign things. We can increment and decrement the variables. We can also uh, do multiple actions, or in this case, no action. In other words, once we leave this field, we're happy. All we did was set the value of first name. So we'll click on OK, and then we'll move the field here that we just created. And let's separate the submit from it, make it a little bit bigger so it's readable. And let's make our input box bigger so the text fits in it. All right, we have an input box. What do we do with it? I'm going to page down to the next page, and let's say we want to welcome you personally. Well, since we have technically your name from the input, we now want to welcome you with it. So I'll, again, click Insert. I'll select, in this case, a standard object again. And this time, we just want a text caption. Now, in our text caption, I want to say something really simple. Welcome, comma. And then I want to input the name of who we're welcoming. Now, how do we do that within this? We go up here to Variables. This allows us to insert a variable into the piece or into the caption. I'll click there, and it gives us a choice. We can use a user-defined variable. In this case, we have first name, and there are several other variables. We have traveler as well as the first name. We'll just choose the first name one. We'll say it's 15 characters long, good enough. If you have a longer name, make it longer. Um, you can also choose from system variables. Now, here you have a whole slew of variables that you can choose from, and you notice there's quite a few. 
but in this case we do want a user variable which is first name. I'll click OK and Captivate places the variable between two dollars on both sides. The two dollar signs in the beginning of the variable and at the end. When Captivate sees the two dollar signs it replaces the value with the variable value that you entered in your input box. And because we're happy to see this we're going to give it three exclamation points. I also want to make this a little bit bigger so it stands out and we'll say OK. So now we'll move this up here. So Paradise Places, welcome, whatever your first name is. Now if I run this, I'll press F4 to run the whole project, to preview the whole project. Captivate will prompt us for the name here. So I will type in my name because I can remember that one. And I can press Submit or I can hit the Enter key. So I'm going to hit the Enter key. And it took us to the next page. And you notice there it says, Welcome Rick. So now we've personalized our site by just entering a simple variable. Now that's, that's pretty nice. That's real easy. Let's say at the end of the piece, I'll, I'll go down to the last page right here. See you on the islands. Well, let's say we want to personalize that, bring that up a little bit. And we want to say, see you on the islands, and personalize it. Well, this is exactly what we did before. So we'll say, see you on the islands. And we'll add a comma. And guess what? We're going to add the variable again. And we'll say user and first name. See you on the islands, whatever that name is. Now let's make this a little bit bigger so it fits. See you on the islands and the name. Now if I run the whole project again, now this is just one application of what you can do with variables. Obviously there's a ton of things you can do with it. But for right now we just wanted to introduce the concept. Again, let me put my name in. And this time I'm going to submit it. And it takes us to our main menu and welcome, welcomes me again. And let's say I just want to say bon voyage. See you on the islands, me. And there you have it, a really simple way to look at variables. Now to actually see what variables you have in your project, you go to project, you go to actions. And then in Actions, there are two tabs, Variables and Advanced Actions, which we'll cover in a later podcast. Under Variables, here are your user variables. And you notice there are three variables set up for this piece, first name, v first name, and v traveler. Now we used to use, uh, we're pretty used to using a v in front of a variable so that we know it's always a variable. There's no doubt as to what we're doing. But you can use any convention you'd like. Here you can set values to the variables. You can default them right at the get-go when you start your project. You can also delete variables. Let's say I don't want these two variables. At least that one. Let's remove that one. And then I want to remove the other one too. So now we only have one variable in the whole piece. Uh, if I want to look at my system variables, I can click on that. And you notice here it's telling me the, the, the value. For example, the first one is what version of Captivate we're using. There you see the value, 4.0.0. So if these variables are available or if they're already marked, you'll see their default values right there inside of Captivate. That pretty much describes a, a quick overview of variables. Later on in future podcasts, we'll get into much more detail. In our next episode, we're going to talk about advanced actions and how you can use variables and advanced actions to create compelling and more powerful Captivate pieces. For Captivating, I'm Rick Zanotti. Thanks for watching and subscribing. And remember, send your comments and requests to captivating at relate.com. See you next week.